Welcome to our wannabe YouTuber home movie production of our sailing trip to the Marlborough Sounds. This was our first coastal trip on Cabaret, a distance of about 70 nautical miles or 13 hours from Wellington to Polaris Sound, transiting the notorious Cook Strait. The movie is a collection of our videos and pictures with some stories and a bit of slow TV. We set about trying to fit three weeks worth of groceries and stores into every available space on the boat. She soaked it all up though, and we got creative with some of the hidden compartments of the hull, proving to be great cubbies for bottles of wine and chip and biscuit stashes. We actually found three bottles of wine tucked away about six months after this trip. We needed to plan our departure time to match the tidal flow through the Cook Strait which is around 5 knots in either direction. This meant leaving at 4.30am, the prospect of which left Paula looking pretty miserable. We were expecting the worst of the strait on what was a bit of a grim morning, but although a bit lumpy at first, the conditions were actually really great. What's going on? Yeah. We're trying to, or I'm trying to steer to 2.31 and we're sailing. Across the south. Across the south? All the careful planning eventually paid off and we were in the tidal stream with the autopilot effortlessly holding course under decent wind from the south. We even managed to get the stay sail out, which is a rare occurrence. For the non-sailors, the stay sail is the inner sail you can see up forward of the boat. Eventually the sun came out and the wind dropped, so we motor sailed the last stretch into Polaris Sound and to Homestead Bay. Paula and Sophie took the opportunity to have an afternoon nap with the strait behind us. We got to Homestead Bay on New Year's Eve and found a couple of our friends on a mooring buoy with their boat, Opportunity. We rafted up with them and celebrated New Year's by having a few beers in an early night after a big day. Sailors midnight i.e. 9pm, is totally a thing. It was amazing how quiet and slow paced things were in the sounds, and I was very aware of how hyped up we were when we arrived. We soon got into the slow lane though, and two days disappeared with endless baking, kayaking, puzzling, swimming, and really, just whatever took our fancy. We also got a glimpse of just what a rich marine environment the sounds are, and why they need to be protected.
got wind of someone's batch, a Kiwi term for a holiday home, having a jetty with filtered spring water. So although we didn't really need it, Sophie kayaked over and filled a couple of cans for storage, while Paula and I prepped the boat for the day's sail to Nafakafiti Bay. Classy, um, true Kiwi look, shorts and boots. Can't see them. We left Homestead Bay with the gentle downwind sail. We soon learned that winds in the sounds are extremely shifty and you can be on a downwind run one moment and close hauled going upwind a few minutes later. This can be frustrating but it's the price of the beauty of the dramatic landscape. Here you can see we're going downwind with the sails set far out to the side of the boat like a parachute. I love the sound of the bow cutting through the water and watching the horizon behind us shift from what I reckon is the best seat in the house. Settle in for a few minutes of slow TV, relax and let yourself become immersed in a view that truly makes my heart happy. After a few hours, we passed through a channel between two headlands where the wind swung 180 degrees. Now sailing upwind, we have the sails pulled in tight to the close hauled position. 
we were getting some really strong gusts, putting us on quite a lead. This sort of sailing really used to scare us when we were first learning the ropes. It was really quite exciting though and Paula was soaking it all up. It's remarkable the force that comes through the hull when the boat is powered up like this and you're having to steer hard against its natural tendency to round up to the wind. The dynamics are fascinating. This is actually perfect for the course. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. After all the excitement in the channel, my watch came round and I was keen to get on the helm with some of the strong winds. Unfortunately, not long after, the wind dropped off and we were reduced to motor sailing, debating whether to keep the engine running to chill the freezer and charge the batteries, or just trundle along slowly under sail. Nature settled the debate as the conditions completely glassed off. That seemed like a good opportunity to have some lunch and work our way through some of Sophie's boat-baked sourdough bread. Evidently, not everything had stayed put while we were on the lean, with some of our charts and odds and ends lying about now. As we hadn't been into Pelora Sound before, we didn't really know which bays were good or not, and took a chance on the Fakafiti Bay on the basis of a Google satellite image. It really paid off though, and we actually spent quite a lot of time here in the end. Go get wet. I had wanted a kayak for a while, and bought a two and a half seater before this trip. I hadn't realized how big it was going to be until we picked it up and put it on the boat. Needless to say, Paula was less than impressed while carting it around back and forth. We used it every day on this trip though, and she eventually admitted that it was a great idea. It's so peaceful out in the water, and being in the kayak makes you feel really small against the hills. I feel like this is exactly what I need in my life. It was just as well we brought the kayak though, as one day we inflated the dinghy to do some exploring, only to realise that I had forgotten to pack in the transom board. That meant that we had no way to secure our outboard engine to the dinghy, and it was essentially then a rowboat.
We really lost ourselves and our concept of time while in the Whakawhiti Bay. It was so remote, with absolutely no connection to the outside world, not even by VHF. While we were there, I was paging through an old cruising guide that was on Cabaret when we bought her. I found the Whakawhiti Bay in the guide, and there was a note next to an anchor symbol, penciled in, simply saying, GREAT, and dated 2nd of January 1998. Here we were, on the 2nd of January 2021, 23 years later, same boat, same place. I then looked up Homestead Bay, where we had just come from, and found it dated 1st of January 1998. At that point we realised that Cabaret was retracing her steps to the day and to the bay, taking us on her adventure. We were fools to think it was the other way around. The time eventually came for us to move on, so we packed up and headed down another arm of Polora Sound to Modi Bay. We had a steady breeze tacking up the sound, Sophie indulging her inner racer. Once into the next arm of the sound, we set up for a downwind run for the rest of the way. We came into Maori Bay and got a little confused at the unmarked and uncharted mussel farms. I need to look at updating our charts, but in any event we were glad we hadn't come in in the dark, otherwise things might have turned ugly. We were treated to more surreal scenery, with a few trips to the shoreline to explore. Paula got a bit restless and decided to scrub the dodger. Once seeing it clean, we realised how much in need of a clean it was. Sophie set about lubricating the blocks and I calibrated the depth sounder. Sadly, Sophie had a flight to catch and a new job to get to in Adelaide, so we made our way to Havelock to drop her off. We spent two nights in Havelock while Sophie got her transport sorted. We took the time to do washing, have nice long showers, eat out and do some shopping. But before long, Sophie was off and we had to say our goodbyes. We would come to miss her bread, cracking banter and pushing us to sail harder. You're always welcome aboard, Sophie. Paula and I made some ambitious plans to head all the way out to Derval Island from Havelock. But once we got underway, there was no wind and we were just feeling a bit flat. We put the fishing rod out and forgot about it as we motored up the sound. Eventually we hooked and landed a strong kawai. Keen not to let it suffer, we tried to cut its artery but really we had no idea what we were doing. There was high pressure blood spraying all over the cockpit with Paula and I in a mild panic. Paula, committed to making sure Mr. Kawai was dead, somehow managed to cut its heart out. So there we were, fish in hand, covered in blood, with, and I kid you not, a fish heart lying on the deck, still beating. After all that, we stripped down to our Andes, set course for Nafakafiti Bay instead, and started cleaning up. Although not new, it was so good being back in a little piece of paradise. We cooked up the carway for lunch and fed the leftovers to the little fish hanging out under the boat. Then it was back to chilling out hard. Are you going to take it off? Uh, I haven't actually tried connecting mm, my video. Oh, am I? We took Cabaret over to Penzance Bay one of the days and decided to go ashore in search of a dairy, that's a corner store for non-Kiwis, where we could buy some ice cream. While the ice cream mission was an outright fail, 
We did go on a nice little bush walk for as long as Paula's injured ankle could handle and also as long as her patience with my squeaky flip-flop would last. We got some great views over the bay along the way. We made plans to head over to Queen Charlotte Sound and being a reasonable distance figured we would take it easy and do it over two days with a stopover in Kitu Bay. After all the chill time we got right into the sail and the conditions were great for it. I finally got my turn on the helm with Cabaret fully powered up under the breeze. Everything was just right with the world. We made it to K2 Bay much quicker than we were planning. It was going to be touch and go on daylight, but we decided to carry on to Queen Charlotte Sound instead. We also saw that Sally and Dave, on opportunity, were anchored off Pickersgill Island, so we had our destination sorted. It was going to be an upwind sail all the way, you're either close hauled or on a run around these parts, so we made a reasonable amount of northing coming out of Polaris Sound before hanging our right towards Queen Charlotte. We were still towing the kayak given our erratic change of plans and the drain plugs were in so it was filling with water over each wave. I tried pulling it in and removing the plugs with the boat on but it was getting pretty dangerous working with the swim platform under sail. It was in no danger of sinking so we left it and considered it a lesson learned. The afternoon wind picked up to about 24 knots, which kept us on our toes, but Cabaret just took it in her stride. No fuss at all. We were pretty well tired by the time we dropped anchor at Pickersgill Island, but had a great day and slept like the dead. We rafted up with opportunity the next morning and settled in for a few more days of chilling in the sun. Paula and I both had great books that had us enthralled and we caught up with Dave and Sally to hear about their adventures. We also did a little bit of fishing but only came up with undersized blue cod. Dave 
Steve had built a nested sailing dinghy that we took out for a spin. It's so strange not having a keel. It felt like it was going to tip over with the lightest breeze. Needless to say, I ended up having to do some bailing after just a little gust, but it was all good fun. After a couple of days we had to start thinking about getting back to Wellington and finding a good weather window to cross the Cook Strait. It was looking like a pretty strong weather system was going to have the sounds locked down for a week or so if we didn't take a gap in the next day or two. So we made our plans and enjoyed another stunning night in this peaceful oasis. departure came with a fair wind. It was looking like it was going to be an interesting crossing. We tacked up and out of Queen Charlotte Sound, with opportunity not far away. Dave and I later discussed that there might have been a bit of a race going on. Well, that was until we got distracted by dolphins. They were either Hector or Maui dolphins, both of which are rare and endangered. What a great farewell from the sounds. Once into the strait, we were running downwind with the tide, so we set the preventer and sat back for what turned out to be another cruisy crossing. We ended up flying past opportunity, with our speed over ground up to 11.5 knots at one point. Dave snapped what has become my all-time favourite picture of Cabaret in her natural environment. interesting video. You no, know, I think it's just every time you film me I'm not actually doing anything. <laughs> Thanks. It's a cook straights like this every time. There's not much to do. As we were coming into Wellington, our trip was topped off with some more dolphins playing off our bow. We were farewell from the sounds by dolphins and welcomed home by dolphins. What a treat! And that brought our amazing trip to an end. It took some real adjustment to fit back into the real world, but it affirmed our choices and that we will be doing more exploring by sea.